while JB's handing those out, I'll just I'll call the meeting to order. To order. Uh, it's the joint special meeting. With the select board, the Zoning Administrator, Planning Commission, Development Review Board, and Planning. Um, I want to thank you, everyone for, for coming. Uh, certainly in my time here in the board, this is uh, the first time for something like this. Um, and it's really come out of I was, I was hoping to get in the, in the board really a consensus on some subdivision regulations. Uh, the Planning Commission has been working on them for a considerable time. Um, they came to us roughly uh, maybe six weeks ago, six eight weeks ago, uh, looking for select board approval of those. And at that time, we had um, uh, there was one person from the public, uh, Dave Russo, Jonathan was here. And through the discussion, it really became clear to me that there was not a, or at the time, certainly a consensus, even Jonathan, who was proposing the, the rec regulations, was um, hesitant on, on uh, whether we needed them or not. Uh, so that question came up, do we need regulations? Dave posed uh, a number of good questions. Just uh, if we put these regulations in place, does the DRB have um, the wherewithal in all the uh, reg uh, uh, things that they need to make these decisions? And so there was some confusion there. Um, so I thought it best if we got everyone together, um, all the parties, the, the parties that, that make the laws, the, the rules, the parties that are trying to enforce them uh, and, and interpret them, if we got everyone together, I think maybe we can have a consensus and move forward that uh, it's best for everyone in town. Uh, so I'd start with, I think the Planning Commission um, would be the first to kind of explain what they're proposing, why they're proposing, or why we're even looking at subdivision regulations. Um, Karen, John? So we, um, we have, as you said, been looking at these for a couple of years now. Um, and uh, we, we adopted, just to give you a little bit of a chronology, we adopted the municipal plan that was approved at the Regional Commission. And the next stop, stop after um, adopting a municipal plan and getting it approved is to review your zoning regulations and um, determine what needs to be changed so that the two are consistent with each other going forward. And we say a lot in the um, municipal plan about um, smart growth, about sustaining our pattern of compact de development in village centers and surrounded by rural countryside, which is also a um, goal of the state that's been in place for some time. So subdivision regulations um, give towns the capacity and the authority to look at things like when there's a, a parcel of land being divided into multiple lots, to look at things like what's the size of the lots, how are they, um, uh, how close are any structures to each other, what's the erosion, the roads, the um, septic, the stormwater management, water, put all those things into a plan as to how it's going to look when you actually um, start building and how do all those lots relate to each other. We looked at uh, subdivision regulations from a bunch of different towns. We decided to go slow and um, uh, be more conservative in what we were proposing. So what that really means, um, at least as I uh, and understanding it is that we, if you've got three or fewer lots that are being divided, that that goes through the regular process now. The zoning administrator would approve that kind of a proposal as is the case now. If it's four or more lots, the development review board would take a look at, um, at the application and would um, evaluate it for consistency with the with the um, standards that are set up in the subdivision regulations, and um, they would make a determination um, 
about whether it should be approved or the plan should be amended or um, it should be denied. So that's really bare bones what subdivision regulations are about. We are one of the few towns in the area that doesn't have subdivision regulations. We are a town that is seeing some new development on, on our road, house road. We've got three houses in the last two years, which is actually almost stunning, um, if you think about house road. But, but there is development happening. Um, there are a lot of large parcels for sale in Moortown right now, and we think it would be helpful to be um, prepared in the eventuality that anybody does come in with a significant proposal for development here. John, did you want to? Well, I don't want to get ahead of the process here, but my, <clears throat> I'm not against this. I'm not clear on what it is. And if it's significant, as Karen ended talking about, it seems like Act 250 steps in if it's more than 10 acres, if it's more than 10 lots being created. A lot of what we're talking about here is development. And it's not clear to me how interchangeable these terms are, because we're not talking about development. We're talking about subdivision. You can subdivide a lot without developing it, and you can do a de uh, develop property without subdividing it. So it's not clear to me where all this fits. Um, one of the things that is a factor in this is that uh, without subdivision regs as we are now, we're a one acre town, is that right? For purposes of commercial development. For commercial Act development. Jurisdiction. But, right. Uh, Act 250 would step in in one acre. But this is commercial development. In more town, we have a commercial district that's pretty full. There's maybe two lots I can think of that could be developed in the, on the Route 2 car over there, which is our commercial district. Uh, I don't know if subdivision would be a factor there. There's pretty small fields across there from the um, Boy Scout place. I don't know how many times you could subdivide that before you start getting into lots about the size of this room. So, I mean, we're really talking about subdivision here, not development. And in this case, it's commercial development when Act 250 gets involved. I don't know how much of that goes on. If it's going to go on in the Ag Res District, then you'd be having um, Act 250, or I guess there'd be some kind of conditional use review that would have to happen anyway. So again, I'm not speaking against this. I just don't understand why we need this. And that's what I'm hearing about, to try and hear what everybody else has to say. I'm very interested to hear what DRB has to say about it, because you guys deal with this kind of thing. Yes, so we, Jay Lee or John, whoever who wants to go first on zoning, and then uh, for DRB. Well, I'll speak to a couple of points. Um, you, you know, I was on the planning commission a long time ago, and I remember twice we, you know, moved towards subdivision regulations, and we did um, surveys at town meeting, uh, and there was pretty strong support in the town to have subdivision regulations. Um, I think in the idea of trying to control, you know, unexpected or inappropriate development. Um, you know, today I have mixed feelings about it. I think I'm kind of like Jonathan. I'm not sure what is the best path forward. Um, you, you know, Jonathan talked about a one acre town, but for Act 250, the subdivision trigger is six because we don't have subdivision regulations. So six, six parcels, right? Six parcels. Six lots. Six lots. Six if you create six lots within a five year window, I think. And it, it's just within more town, or is it within the District 5? It's within five years, within five miles of any um, concerned piece of property. So one individual, if he controls land anywhere within five miles of his five mile mile that would be. So But also within the town, wouldn't it, or no? So if I did three lots uh, over in Jones Brook, and then I did yeah. three lots um, at More Town Common, would yeah. that count as six? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I mean, I, 
it, you know, the thought is a, a large, significant development is going to trigger Act 250, and the Act 250 commissions with their professional staff, uh, and they have additional criteria that they look at that typically we would not, like archaeological sites and um, certainly a delineation of wetlands and things like that. So, um, you know, the question kind of is, are we seeing, you know, is the planning commission, is the zoning administrator, and I read with interest uh, JB's memo because he talked about a number of small subdivisions that he's approved, uh, and he has some concerns about that because he had no authority to address uh, the roadways that were being created within the subdivision, um, or stormwater runoff, and that there may have been some issues that have developed as a developer, you know, implemented that subdivision. Um, you know, to some extent, if you're a purchaser of one of those lots, I think you um, you need to do your due diligence. Um, so, uh, and I think the other you know, direction the, the, you know, as the development review board, uh, we do not have any professional staff. Uh, you know, we know something about things from our different individual experiences, but uh, in terms of reviewing and approving a stormwater plan, you know, I, I don't really, uh, you know, I'm not an engineer. And, and I think the other, it, it's funny how Things have changed, but you know, 20, 25 years ago, we were worried about the school and whether we were going to, you know, had capacity to take all of the the kids that might want to attend there, and there was an expense associated with that. But now we have the statewide education tax, so all the money goes to the state, and what people pay is really governed by the state. Um, and if you, there's a concern, do we have enough children to keep the school open? And, and so when there's new homes that are going up off House Road uh, and in, you know, North Moortown where the Gallagher Acres development is being built out, I mean, maybe that's, that's a good thing and the town should welcome that um, and not add additional hurdles and expenses to people that are trying to create lots because it's, as we all know, it's extremely expensive to build, uh, and the land and the permitting expenses are a big piece of it. So um, it's kind of what, what does the town want going forward is part of the, part of the question. Now that, that point was brought up. Um, I think we all agree that the town, we would welcome uh, homes being built and these families coming in. Uh, in addition to that, and it was, it was Carl Wimble's Comments. Uh, he was the, the one public person that, that attended, and he talked about uh, as a town person being able to sell this land, um, being you know a farmer or past farmer. You know, he doesn't have four hundred one k's. That's his four hundred one k, and so he feels like he's being uh, kind of uh, restricted on when he can uh, cash that in, if you will, uh, with if we were to go with subdivisions. So that was a, that's a concern almost your point as well, as far as limiting uh, people's ability to build. JB? Oh, just and, and to that point, uh, as, as I mentioned before, this <clears throat> these regulations uh, or anything similar that's relatively bare bone would not affect Car Wimble uh, or your usual um, mom and pop one lot subdivision here or there. It is really more geared towards a higher, a higher density of development, whether it be three, four, or five lots, something like that. And if somebody's going to go out and develop those lots, I think they should have prepared beforehand, including, you know, for whether it's stormwater or roads, and have to, you know, if you're going to be carving off four lots for sale, the uh, effort should be put in up front to a certain degree. Uh, whereas Carl, you know, he peels off a lot here and there, and this wouldn't be any different. He would, as I mentioned, he would, might have to put a couple more arrows or in a site plan and maybe spend another five or ten minutes in that respect, but uh, as far as those one lot subdivision, you know, carving off a lot here and there, those really would not be affected. Would it not though jump to Act 250 if it got, is it bigger than six lots? Is that what we said that would? Yeah, well, it's what, less commercial one, yep. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be the, the change 
Well, and I'm a little bit gray on this, but if we had subdivision regulations, instead of being a six lot subdivision town, you become a 10. But apparently, there's an option within Act 250 that you can elect to remain a one acre town for commercial development and a six lot town for residential development. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the commercial piece of it's a big one, uh, I, you know, I think. Um, and that was my concern with the view of commercial projects. And, um, this is a list of the towns. And by the way, only half the towns in Vermont have subdivision regs according to A&R. So everybody's doing it is not everybody. It's, it's about half the towns. Um, 131 to 131, actually split even. <laughs> Um, and then a few of those towns remain one acre towns even though they have subdivisions. So places like Benson, Brandon, I know Waterbury did. Do you have to petition to be a one acre town or is it just a well, application? It's, it's the Act 250 board recognizes it, so I'm not sure how you get them to recognize it. You, I think you notify them that you want to be a one acre town. Yeah. So, so they don't review it, it's just a notification process. Yeah. They retain the right, actually, even if you're a 10-acre town, it says they retain the right to claim jurisdiction on a project, according to this. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, um, But the commercial review, that was my concern on the DRB, is um, 10 acres or less versus one acre. Um, most commercial properties in more town are 10 acres or less, so almost every development or redevelopment of a commercial property if we adopted this would come to the DRB and as John said we don't have the staffing to handle that nor probably the expertise um, you know and I'm just thinking of the landfill um, the review that was done on that just at the DRB level that wasn't even the additional criteria um, that would have been required so you know suppose they five years from now just come back or any of it, you know, there's a junkyard there I think is being sold or was for sale. If that were to come in, um, any of the, at the Ann and Home Center, any of that development, you know, that, that could certainly come before the board is. Um, right. And, yeah, and right. skipping Act 250, you, you, they have the Ridge Johnson, they have the resources. Plus, I think for the applicant, probably a commercial applicant, I'd be more nervous talking to a DRV of unknown folks than I would a known quantity in the district commission that I've been before and you know the people and you know the decisions and they have a track record, you know what they want to see versus uh, a board of uh, public, you may not know what you're getting into and maybe your application go forward and, and maybe it would go forward under one board and two years later it wouldn't, you know, it's right. like maybe it's the personalities that it comes to the meeting. Well, I think on the board, there's, there's certainly the, there's the expertise. I mean, when I look around the U.S., but it's the resources is what I'm concerned about. And when I say resources, the money to pay for the experts. Go ahead. Uh, well, um, I, um, you know, I think in our experience, there have been numerous situations where we've entertained applications uh, and um, recognized that. Um, you know, for one aspect or another, there have been other permitting requirements, uh, stormwater, um, to name just one, or Act 250. Um, and so, as a development review board, we've, deferred, we've, we've simply, you know, kind of tacitly recognized that whatever um, requirements there that, that we might be concerned with would be um, picked up uh, through the state stormwater permitting uh, process for uh, through Act 250, and we've sort of backed off and just left it with a condition that you know provided the applicant uh, you know if, if we approve something, we approve it with a condition that uh, you know they they get their stormwater permit or. other permits as required um, you know so with the I think the the landfill was a particular situation where I felt personally speaking only for myself a real need to invoke the provision in the zoning regs which would have allowed us to um, 
retain at some cost an expert with respect to certain issues. But, you know, ultimately they withdrew their application for the fourth cell. And, um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how others felt. I, I kind of suspect we would not have gone that way. Uh, but um, there is that one provision. And then, um, you know, I think with respect to certainly uh, residential uh, subdivisions for residential parcels, um, you know, when you're subdividing more than four lots, um, there's a significant uh, value uh, and, and, you know, I, I should say perspective uh, You know, there's enough financial incentive to uh, sort of accompanying that subdivision to, you know, make it to, to justify the additional expense of uh, putting together a sound um, application under either local zoning, just as, as that may apply, or under prospective subdivision regulations. There's enough at stake to do it. And by not including, you know, we do have obviously the um, zoning regs as they exist now, but, um, you know, I, it's, you know it, it, well, I haven't fully studied this or compared how certain proposals would be treated differently with the addition of subdivision regulations. But um, the prospect of haphazard, sort of ad hoc uh, subdivision of properties without giving enough, uh, you know, advanced consideration of uh, erosion mitigation during development or post-development, um, you know, sort of a one-shot deal. Last week, uh, I, I was down at the, the lower end of Stevens Brook, and I, you know, we had a stretch of really beautiful dry days. I looked down the stream, and it is just muddy, running very, very muddy. And I am concerned. The siltation of small streams and the Mad River is a concern. You know, it, you know, is it that significant? Well, it adds up. Um, so I did some looking around, and I saw that the town uh, was replacing a culvert on uh, uh, up off, I uh, can never remember the name of that road. Um, Bat Hennessy. Bat Hennessy. Yeah. At the top of Bat Hennessy Road. <coughs> so, you know, it's a, obviously the cul there was a need identified to replace the culvert there, and, you know, the work was going on, and the beaver, beavers uh, were agitated and, you know, resulted in a lot of, you know, that, that, that's a one-day thing, hopefully. And then after replacing the culvert, um, the ground is stabilized. There can be lots of situations where that is not take, you know, not dealt with in a responsible way. And um, you know, we wouldn't, you know, we, we, none of us would know about it. So I don't know. Act 250 has a pretty, um, you know, good. A program for use the utilization of erosion mitigation, and you know it's not super effective, but I mean, that's just one one issue. Anyway, I have two questions. First of all, <clears throat> we're talking about subdivision regulations, and what I'm not clear on is we keep talking about commercial development and commercial properties. So, and so, am I correct then? To do so here that if we have subdivision regulations, it affects properties, commercial properties that are not being subdivided. It's just about if you have some it makes it makes more time a town where if you're proposing commercial development on three acres of land, you no longer have to get an Act 250 permit. You only have to get a local permit. So that's the impact on could be that we're not subdivided. Correct. Even if you're not right. subdivided, it's the commercial use. Could you defer like like Waterbury did for the subdivision regulations to make this six lot town? Could we defer on the commercial part? 
I don't know. I'm not familiar with how that works. Um, <coughs> that seems to be a major, major concern. Yeah. I think the way the Act of 50 um, jurisdiction works, you you say we want to remain a one-acre town, and that and so that applies, or so Act of 50 jurisdiction continues to apply the way it does today, or we want to, we're going to be a 10-acre town and it applies under the other provisions. We couldn't like split the difference. I don't. I don't think it that seems they like they did that. it for Waterbury for the for the subdivision part. <laughs> can't see why. No, I think you can't split it. Waterbury did it for both. Waterbury is a one acre town. Oh, okay. So, so my other question is, if I have this right, without subdivision rights as we are now, Act 250 doesn't get involved until how many lots are created? Six. 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 And if, they, if we enact subdivision rights, where do they come in? Ten? And, and unless we yes. opt out, apparently. Right. And, and trying to keep them coming back at six. Well, if we keep them at six, I mean, it's, I totally understand and I'm sympathetic. I mean, I would not want to have to deal with the stuff that you guys have to deal with in terms of, you know, permitting properties where there's a lot of expert testimony and all that has to happen. As far as, like, the landfill goes, they were in uh, they were in Act 250. It's my understanding that if a property is in Act 250, it's always in Act 250. So if you get an Act 250 permit for a project, it's completed, and then 10 years or whatever later, you want to make a substantial change to that, you got to go through Act 250 for your amendment or addition, whatever it's called. Am I correct with that? Yeah. Well, I think there's a case uh, yeah. pending right now okay. where that is the very issue. <laughs> is it living in the it's minor I mean, nature I mean, for the purposes of this discussion? Yeah, that's generally true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, in the case of the landfill, I mean, that's not your, I mean, you guys were doing it concurrently, which I found interesting, but mm -hmm. um, you had Act 250 covering it as well. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, it was more complicated. Personally, I, I don't necessarily. Uh, I mean, I'm just using this as an example. I think it, I think <laughs> I think it was prudent for the town to be looking closely at the potential expansion of that landfill, given the statewide issue right. concerning uh, you know the limited uh, capacity in landfills. I do I do think it's kind of an unusual example though. There's only two landfills in the state right now, and so one. There, there's a little one in Bristol, but um, but yeah, I mean you're not going to run across another landfill. No, but but my no, point basically is that yeah. I mean for a lot of these projects they're already in Act 250, so it doesn't matter what happens. With, and this is my understanding. If I'm wrong, point it out. The other part of it is we're only talking about if it's three or less, and JV just writes a permit. I'm a little surprised that he can't, using his discretion, decide, well, this is more involved than I want to be ruling on. He can't bump this up to DRB or whoever you know, and say, even though it's less than three, there's some mitigating issues here. But if it's three or less and it's just a sign off by the zoning administrator, and Act 250 comes in at six, we're talking four and five, um, and but John, I don't think it's the, the it's, uh, those developments or those lots. It's really so much the question now. It's more because of because of the subdivisions. It kicks the commercial back to these guys, um, and, and that's what we're we're trying to avoid because all the you know, we don't have anything over ten acres developable for commercial lots. Everything is under ten acres or less, so it will fall to. Uh, I, I understand, but I don't get why. Um, <coughs> I'm having a hard time explaining it. it. It's like if Act 250 will deal with this, let's let them deal with it. And these but guys we, are not qualified. If, if we have subdivision regulations, we end up the responsibility falls on us. Uh, not unless we don't declare right. that we want to continue to be a one acre town. See, what I, what I got interested about subdivision regulations as a planning commission member was 
when we worked closely with JB um, reviewing the zoning regulations and realized that there were some gaps and he expressed that he has some difficulty, like he said in the memo that you all received, making good decisions with the current tool that he has. So we felt like the subdivision regulations was giving a tool to a municipal staff member to do his job better. And if it doesn't come at the expense of the DRB or the commercial development side because of this option of remaining one acre, I don't really see what the risk is here. I feel like subdivision regulations enable our current staff member to do his job better and also give us this ability to integrate a little more with our road and our zoning and end up with more of a one-stop shopping place in our regulations for, for subdivision of any size. I mean, it's a, and it's only a start. It's a, a kind of a minimal start. Um, but it's the minimum to do his job well as zoning administrator. So I, I feel like it's, I needed to really listen to that as a planning commissioner. So I, I wondered if I could about the, the policy, so the mechanics aside, the policy decision too is the theory of clustered development, which only goes as far as the market demand for such developments, right? So you can put it everywhere in your policy, but if no one wants to buy, you know, if you have 12 acres and all the houses are in the corner, well, that's great policy. But if no one wants to buy those, that means that the person developing them is not going to build them, even if we tell them. That's what we want you to build, and he's going to say, well, that's fine, I'll go to wherever Bill's Gore go. <laughs> no zone. But, you know, so, I mean, there's probably that, that old question of, is that really what we want for more town? Because by, by kind of gerrymandering the lots to be our vision, you drive the price up, maybe. Um, because if there's more expense for the developer, that developer's going to want to get that investment back out of the lots. So they're not going to build smaller affordable homes are going to try and get their money out and get that investment they spend on lawyers and consultants to do the application. I mean, Terry's point, to, to make money, you've got to spend money, but you're probably not going to do that to break even. So, you know, that's sort of the policy choice that we have to think about. So the subdivision regulations don't require clustering. What, th what they require is a plan that um, shows where the lots are going to be and where the structures are going to be um, in relation to all the infrastructure that needs to go in, in that kind of a development of a subdivision, excuse me. And um, so, you know, there's still a lot of leeway for um, the person who's proposing the project. It's, it doesn't dictate anything really other than the information. This sort of goes to Jonathan's question though. So, and then JD, I don't know if you know, but suppose one of the large timberlands is the proposals to subdivide, say it's 100 acres and they want four 25 acre lots, but not to build, but they just want to subdivide. And to access those lots, they want a road. The way I read it, they would need a, then a plan, a master plan, basically to you know draw draw two lines on a parcel and say here's now this was one and now it's four. Is yeah, that the true? Creation of a new road and with a road to access the, the separate parcels would that then be a subdivision? Even though no development is planned, just just the act of just drawing a line on the map and putting a road in that becomes a subdivision. Lots, yes, yeah. lots, correct. Okay. Yeah. So that's your question. You don't have to build a house, you have to. Right, but if the lots are being proposed, but there's no plan to subdivide or to develop yet, I mean, you assume well, eventually everything's going Well, to yeah. Happen. But I mean, you could, I mean, there's a, one of the timber vest lots right now that's just been sold, and the guy's going to subdivide, but there's no, that I'm aware of, construction planned on any of the newly created, going to be created lots. Um, there may be, there probably will be at some point, but there's three lots being created out of this, and it's not clear to me whether, is that a subdivided off of the, from the 776? Well, they were deeded separately, so. Okay, so it's not a subdivided. Correct. Yeah. So, as I understand this, the original lot is not counted in the lots created. 
So if you have a parcel that's 100 acres and you want to subdivide off three 10 acre lots, that's a three lot subdivision, not four. Is that, am I correct on that? Well, it's the wording of the ordinance. Yes. Uh, most ordinances would say that's a four, you're creating four lots. Well, that's four what I thought. Lot. Mm -hmm. Somebody corrected me, was it you? The way this is worded? That it's the, the original lot that the lots are being it's not kind of doesn't count. Either way, just 100 acres, you you over 100 build. acres, three lots. If one of them is out of the equation, then there's two. Uh, nobody is looking to develop those lots at the, in the near term. Right, but they will subdivide them. Right. So in theory, here it says uh, subdivision of land which results in the creation of a total of four or more lots. So, okay, so then it does include the so, it is. Yeah. so that would be a three lot subdivision if this 109 acres gets carved into three different parcels. No, I think the total is four lots. Well, four or more. He just changed his example. He, right. <laughs> he went from yeah, three to three. I'm using my 100 acres. That would be a four lot. Yes. Right. yes. <laughs> uh, which brings up a point that um, whatever, if, if these are adopted or something like these are adopted, uh, you know, kind of erring on the side of, 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 of looking for critically looking for ambiguities and you know either by defining terms or adding more specific language um, it's helpful to us I, when that applications was, actually come in. And that was one of the, the points we were hoping here as well tonight it is to try to figure that out. What is the, the language because it seems like the, the zoning regulations say one thing the planning commission, you know, we're all saying we mean the same thing, but we seem to say it in different languages. And and Dave was mentioning that at our, our previous meeting. He, it's hard for you guys to interpret that mm -hmm. again. So, what is the best way to get that? Can I ask a question? Sure. Because well, we're really talking about does it make sense to have these or not? Right. Um, my, my sense is. If I read the timeline, there's going to be a public vote at the November election. No, no, no. no. Okay. No, we would uh, if we adopt these. The select board goes ahead and says, "All right, we want to adopt something." It would be the March town meeting is when we would have that vote. Okay, um, but there would be a town vote that would decide. Yes. The town decides. It. Yeah. The town decides. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way. yeah. Oh. But uh, we all know that most things that are put forth at, at town meeting pass. So, um, you know, uh, we just want to make sure that we're putting <laughs> forth the best. Yeah, and you know, I made this statement, and I think it's probably pretty accurate that I think if it goes to a town vote, there would be general support and concept <coughs> by doing this, uh, just the way more town tends to vote on things. Um, so it sounds to me like if we adopted them, it would make JV's job easier. And if we have the one acre uh, for commercial, that would make the DRB's job easier. So it's not a win-win. So the so the <laughs> DRB yeah. the DRB <laughs> the have, the <laughs> um, have three cases this year. That's what you looked at. Three cases. Uh, I know. Year yeah. four. I mean, historically, yeah. we have had about 10 to 12 applications a year. Yes. In the last two years, there's been a pretty significant drop off overall. Uh, and, and JB was um, saying that there was probably one additional case that you would have had to review this year had these regulations been in place. Actually, the last three, we're now in the last three years. That's looking at my uh, most recent spreadsheet that would have one, one subdivision over the last three Would that just been subdivisions to what about commercial development? <laughs> I mean, well, the bike shop. Yeah, the yeah, bike shop. shop. I, well, the bike shop. All the food that we need, the, the catering place. I mean, catering place. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, but a couple. <laughs> Opposite of that is, you know, what is the problem that you're trying to address if there's not a problem now? 
why I didn't try to We're trying to be proactive. <laughs> um, Some of us are trying to be proactive. Well, I, I thought one of the arguments, just the commercial one acre aside, the, uh, if we went from uh, Act 50 now looking at six, if we have subdivision division regulations nine, then that could be maybe a more of an incentive for people to come to more town because in theory, our, our subdiv subdivision regulations aren't gonna be as arduous and expensive as Act 250. So you might be able to get that window now of people coming in and developing that we wouldn't have if we didn't have the subdivision. Just anecdotally, I know people who will not live in Duxbury for the very reason that they don't uh, uh, seem to take their zoning regs and uh, land development uh, concerns very seriously. <laughs> so I know that's one argument, but then that doesn't help with the, the one acre. But that's why I was saying if we can parse that potentially, that, that maybe that could be uh, something that could be advantageous to the town. Some of this is already, I mean, if you live in the ag res, this one of the ag res districts, and you want to do some, I have a wood shop. When I built it, I had to get a conditional use permit to do it. There was no subdivision wasn't part of this, but it was a commercial and an ag res. That still is part of the equation, whether we had zoning regs or not. Mm -hmm. So bringing in zoning regs, I mean, I, my thing was so minor, I don't think Act 250 would have had an interest in it. But at the same time, don't we're we already have it on more than one acre? Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was on one more than one acre. Yeah, if you had asked for a project for you sheet, they might have told you. Um, well, so that, it was before the DRB. It was what the Zoning Board of Adjustment was the. I need to start about that there for you. Let's not go there. Can we not go there? This was a long time ago. <laughs> I think you're safe now. So <laughs> you your title search. <laughs> Um, it just seems like we already have a review process in place for a lot of this stuff. If it's a big thing, Act 250 is going to kick in anyway. Just because yeah, of that's that's part of the philosophical, you know. Because when you look at you know developments and what people have to get for permits, I mean, the largest because there's no municipal water or sewer except near Waterbury Village. There's water. Um, you, you know, largely the development of land is a function of, you know, setback distances for wastewater systems and where you put wells and, uh, you, you know, that, those permitting requirements and if stormwater is triggered, um, you, you know, in my mind, at least in my experience in this day and age, seems to largely stop, um, you know, reckless development that might have happened 40 years ago. Um, so, you know, so do we really need this? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's fair that the, the town, there seems to be interest in it and that, you know, the voters mm -hmm. vote on it. And if it's adopted, <coughs> you know, the DRB will, will do what <coughs> we're asked to do. Um, you, you know, and on that level, I think, I don't know if, if we want in this meeting to talk about kind of you know, how these standards work and, you know, can they be strengthened or improved or made clearer so that when applications come in, assuming they're adopted. I think that would be a good idea for you guys to take home and take a look at them and, and then submit maybe some comments back to Cheryl or to JB, uh, Jonathan, whoever, Karen. And then let's take, let's take a look at those guys, take a look at that. Maybe we can tweak what we have um, and yeah. uh, you know, really accomplish what we all want. I mean, we're all looking for the best interest of the town, for our employees, uh, you know, for our boards. And I think with, with your your uh, insight from uh, your board's uh, input, everyone, I think we can, you know, hopefully put something together or, or at least make a decision that, you know what, this is really not right for us. Uh, you know, and, and we can go forward, but I'd like to do that if we could, uh, you know, take, I don't know, a couple of weeks, because we need, we do need uh, time to, to warn this and such, so if you guys could take the next couple of weeks to 
make comments, uh, get them to the, uh, let's say Cheryl, that way they all come back to one central place and then she can uh, disperse them. And that should bring us, oh, so mid-October, we can maybe get together. Uh, we don't have to get together as a group again, or we can, depending on what your feedback is, and I'll talk to everyone what they thought, or depending on what the, the comments are. Um, but we can you know, make that decision later, but I think this is a good start and then we'll work uh, forward from there. Do you want to set a date? Um, you well, want a month from now? Yeah, well, a couple well, of weeks I, from now. I guess if I could, I mean, yeah. I just think if we, I mean, I was just gonna make a few general comments that you know, this would seem as good an opportunity as any with a lot of folks present. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. No, if you're prepared to do it now, I think it's just, just kind of general things. I know, I mean, it's titled Article 6. <clears throat> um, would it, this would be a standalone ordinance? Mm -hmm. No, it would be, it would be in, in, in the book. So, I mean, we have an Article 6 now. And so Article 6 would become Article 7. Okay, or Article yeah. 8. Or Okay. So the enforcement is always last usually. And and so they would tie into all the existing definitions that are in the ordinance? That, that would be the plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um because I noticed there weren't any definitions of things like the subdivision. You know, we talked about you know what constitutes mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. well more like you know, you've got three new lots and the retain or you know you've got one parcel and you create the three 10 acre parcels from the hundred is that four lots or is that three lots which is a pretty important question so well i think there's a definition of yeah. subdivision yeah. and a zoning yeah. ordinance but I, I know there's, there's definitions in the regs but is that one of the definitions is that the font? Division of any parcel of land for the purposes of conveyance, transfer of ownership, lease, improvement, building, development, or sale, whereby two or more lots, blocks, or parcels are created. The term subdivision includes resubdivision. And I think, um, does land development include subdivision? Mm -hmm. Yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and then I think the language of uh, the proposed subdivision regulations um, section 6.1 C 1 A <laughs> which results in the creation of a total of three mm -hmm. or fewer versus um, the language that I wrote read off before on the very top line of the second page of this thing you know I think that's pretty clear well, the only thing that uh, somebody who I respect, and I can't remember who it was, <laughs> I, I, it was somebody who knows about this stuff, and I said, no, 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 like, the, the primary lock does not count as... Well, yeah, but did they read this But lady? that's not what right. this right. is. Yeah. Well, you don't know. I think John's correct. The that's the largest is big room. If you have it would be better to spell it out yeah. yet more clearly, but I don't think it's so. Yeah. One lot is split into three. Have two been created or have three been created? I think that's not clear. Whatever you want to. It would be I'm not advocating for one or the other. Just, just no, I don't. Just spell it out. Yeah. Clarity, sure. Clarity, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one example. <laughs> now, just along those lines, there are developers that buy, I and mean, this is the C1A, the five year period. And they hold the land, and then every five years they carve off two lots and two lots and two lots. So that's there's no avoiding oh, that. Yeah. But that yeah. will happen. Carl, 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 Carl. That will happen. <laughs> Somebody like Carl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's self development because you can do it without having to trigger the five years. In, in conditional use review, what's been somewhat onerous and problematic for some applicants is making sure that all abutting property owners get noticed. That's a requirement, conditional use for the applicant. Right. Is, is, is that gonna be a requirement for a subdivision proposal that every abutter would get notice of the application? 
think so. Yeah. For the development review board. Yes. Yeah. So that's that, embedded in the ordinance and would be trigger. Yes. Okay. But if, if it goes through me, if it's a two or three lot subdivision, uh, there is no requirement in there that a butter be done. Okay. But they have to put up the post. Exactly. Except uh, absent this, the permit itself, mm -hmm. which would put them on notice. Okay. Hmm? So the other permit set before the permit is issued, do they have a con period or after? After the permit is issued and posted, there is a 15 day basically waiting period for people to. To, okay. So yeah. there is no notification. No, no, only if you see. If you drive by. Yeah. Oh, if you drive by, exactly. Unless, it's, unless it goes to the, to the DRB, in which case they would all, okay, so I, butters would all be. Not waiting so long. So I'm just, I thought I heard you say that you would notify them. No, if, no there is no, if, if it's, if it's re reviewed administratively, then it's just like any other application. The butters don't get notified absent the permit being posted, and that's their notice. It goes to the board, well, then part of the application and that's, after, that's after it's been granted that it gets, mm -hmm. and then there's a 15 day window. Mm -hmm. So if you, you don't live next door, you may never know until you see, until it's happened. But the guy next door, if he finds out at what point, he he's got 15 days to appeal to the DRB. The John, well, if he's not notified, it assumes that he's going to know somehow at some point before the 15 days appeal period. Well, that's really for the planning commission to think about in thinking about how these rules should work. Well, you know, and, you know, and, and crafting how it fits into the zoning ordinance. And then maybe if it's merely a subdivision without any land development or site work, maybe it's you know the prerogative of the owner to be able to do that without notifying all the neighbors but at some point at, at a point if, if, if it's going to involve immediate construction of a road <coughs> to serve both lots uh, that might justify wanting to let neighbors know or put you know be more active in notifying them not just the permit a road would be developed you know it's you yep. know, no houses just the road it's developed but once you, I have a question, once you split it up, say you split one into four, but you don't plan to do anything with it, so you don't have to go through the subdivision regulations, but then in five years you do, but aren't they separate lots at that point, so there is no subdivision regulations? Because they're separate lots? At the time you split them up, you go through this process. Well, that's what I'm saying, maybe you didn't Even build. if you don't build the road, the road gets approved. Or you the still have to go through the process, even if you're just drawing lines on a map. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you have to file a survey mylar within yeah. 180 days. Gotcha. Um, so. Mm -hmm. But you could say, I'm not building any houses. <clears throat> yeah. And in year six, you have four lots, and you just go apply for a single home residence. That's what I'm saying. Well, or what if they're all, uh, what if they all abut the town highway? Yeah, and then all right. yeah, in six mm -hmm. years, all four of them go to build houses. Mm -hmm. But then they're separate so, lots even though it's technically started as a subdivision. Yeah. It's amazed me since being on the board, at least in two instances, people did four or five lot subdivisions like 20, 25 years ago, and they just drew lines on the map. And when the engineer went to try to build one of the houses, they were like, yeah, you know, these lots make no sense based on topography and the way, and, and so they had to come into the board to get an amendment to the original permit. Yeah, because they were so paranoid that they would that the rules would change, the lot minimum lot sizes would be uh, increased, um, so they grandfathered themselves at significant expense. Um, so, so why did the DRB see it since? Because they had to amend the uh, prior permit. Okay. Um, we had some questions earlier about it getting kicked into a major subdivision with the creation of a road and exactly what that meant. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think that was Cheryl had brought something up, but uh, see, we, a road starts for us at the creation of three. Mm -hmm. Well, no, because it was in two, C2A. Yeah, we talked about it. In C2A, mm -hmm. it's sort of elegantly worded that it says, and or involves construction of a new road. And because of the or, 
it, it basically, if you build a road, it gets yeah. it into major. Mm -hmm. And that was my point. So, so that clause involves the construction. Is that the subdivision of land involves the construction of a new road, yes. or the creation of four lots that involves the construction of the road? It's, what if it's, 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 it's that, meant to be the subdivision itself, I mean, that, that's a, which is usually triggered by you know having three lots. Sure, but the that ambiguity that that there. creates sure. to me is much more significant okay. than whether or not mm -hmm. the original lot is included yeah. in the calculation. I think that's what you were getting at last time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This says now if you want to put in a road, it's a major subdivision mm -hmm. without any splitting of property. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, it could be argued differently. But. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be clarified. Yeah, and road is probably not a good term. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would normally be just a common driveway of some type. I mean, I think you would need to try to define it better. Mm -hmm. Isn't it defined it is. there? Well, road serves two lots, and I mean, uh, three lots or more, and a driveway can serve up to two lots. Yes, so a road so is defined as serving three or more in lots. In half, you're only creating two lots. Even if you put in a road, it's not a road. It's, it's a, a shared lot. driveway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So did you, I think we also heard that um, by taking the time to do a better job with your subdivision plan, you end up with a more saleable down the road for the developer. They have something better to work with. So, you know, there's also that value to consider. Um, that and then that's uh, that's a community service that's being promoted. So we just go and answer, if someone divides into four and says we're not going to build, and then one of those, you know, and then all that four of those itself, people. That what? by itself requires subdivision approval. Okay. But, you're, but all you're approving, okay, so if it's, Great. these subdivision regulations, if they were passed, it was six or less, correct? So if you're dividing ones that have to go through these subdivision regulations, and they say we're not going to build right now, and you approve their subdivision regulations, because or you approve them for a subdivision, because all they did was divide, nobody's going to build, there's no stormwater, there's no active 50. And then in five years, all the ones that subdivide all come in, there'll be individual lots putting in building permits, correct? Mm -hmm. So they're so still... They'll have regulations they have to follow to the, yeah. the concept but how, of building... Yeah, but, but one lot has a regulation, or all six lots together have a regulation. If they're if they're sold individually, mm -hmm. somebody subdivides the lots and then sells them to individual owners. I think that then when that when those individuals come in for a permit to build, they're going to get one permit for their one house. Right. But you already had the lines drawn on the map when you went for the initial subdivision, like not the building envelope, but the lot lines. Mm -hmm. So the subdivision only has to do with the lines of the land. No. Depends what you're doing at the time that you apply for the subdivision. Okay. That's the way I would have, read it. You might not need to build the road right then, but you would have to at least show where the road would go. Thank you. That's <laughs> okay. answering my question. <laughs> you would, would, you, would you or you ask where is it, assuming that this becomes developed, where is your road going to go? It would have to, it would have to be that included on the site. Like, that's 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 sure. Like, mm -hmm. right. Um, but if they're all abutting a town road, then, then they don't need it. Yeah. They just need a curb. And it's yeah. sort of false. I mean, if the concern is that that's not very uh, kind of uh, thoughtfully uh, or well planned uh, to to do that with the idea that when they build their houses, they're all just going to have spaghetti. You know, mm -hmm. I mean that that sort of falls through the cracks. Yeah. Right? this kind of regulation, but, you know, can't get everything right. So let's just make sure I understand the concern it, on, on A on the top of page two. It's the sub major is subdivision to four or more, and the and or what you're concerned about is, like, even if you constructed a road for a three-person subdivision, that could trigger the major. Yeah, in words, that, what if you just made a road for your sugar bush? Well, I say it wasn't an egg, say it was for her too. 
because it says or construction of the road. But to me, that or makes that stand alone. Right. So, so we took the or out. That would be clear, at least in this case. Or if you separated those two mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Into you know one two. So if you own a property and you just want to create a road to access your sugar bush or whatever. That's agriculture. That's exactly. No, I say it's, it's not a road. There's a definition in the ordinance of road that's 889 that JB referred to, and it has to be for traffic that's going to serve three or more lots. Okay. So that's the. So you get this one situation would be say if you had a, uh, a 20 acre vacant lot, and you decided I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to create two more parcels. So there's your uh, three lot subdivision. S maybe still accesses off the mountain road or town road, but in, in going from one to three, you now have three lots and you're gonna have to put a road through that would kick it to the DRV. Otherwise, otherwise JB could approve three, but in that instance, the three lot subdivision would go to the DRV because, because there's a road, so. But if there's road front, it's the first lot can have a curb cut, and second, the road can service the other two, and then you- Then it's the zone of the administrator. Uh, Seems like there's a way around a lot of this just by yeah. having. Well, so much of it is a function of somebody looking at land and house sites and where the soils perk and where you can drill a well and meet the setbacks. And um, I mean, that's how the process works. Um, you know, this process of you know taking a piece of paper and cutting up lots. Um, it just doesn't seem to happen anymore. But if it's well, always, well, you can't, I mean, you, you just can't uh, have regs that, there are always going to be ways that uh, certain people are going to find a way around. I mean, it used to be uh, build a road 799 feet and you're not in 250, and <laughs> if it's 800 feet or longer, um, you are in it. 50. Now, that's not the case. And then there are the people who, uh, you know, develop uh, a network of forest roads that are built, like, amazingly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we're just logging here until the time comes that they... So the trees are gone, now we're putting it out. Yeah. No, look at this, the open lots. <laughs> so, <laughs> but to get to your example that you just said, I mean, one of the things that Karen's brought this up before, when you're doing, like, a subdivision and it happens piecemeal, some of the problems down the road, for example, you may create four lots. Maybe you put in a road, maybe you don't, doesn't matter. But the first guy, after however many years, decides I'm building a house. Here's my septic, here's my well, here's my driveway, whatever. The next guy comes in, he bought the lot next door. All of a sudden, your well or your septic is compromising the only place where he can put his well. Yeah, his that's, yeah. that's not a town issue. That's and are in the wastewater. But if it's three or less, it they doesn't. Don't they in. don't come in until this guy's got a problem. Because you could. But I, I mean, you're not equipped to know where where it perks, where it's a well is possible. Those kinds of but things. The, but the state handles all those permit requirements. Right. But the subdivision happens five, seven years prior. So mm -hmm. if you're a developer or a subdivider, and you actually want to sell. Mm -hmm building lots that will have places for a septic system and a replacement area and meet the isolation distance for a, a, a drilled well, you know, you've got to plant so a lot of planting. <laughs> Can you subdivide your property and not sell it? I mean, you could. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you could, in theory, subdivide it, and this doesn't come up until Parts of it have been developed, in which case, I mean, obviously part of it is buyer beware, but a lot of it is, you know, what are you preventing from happening in terms of a problem coming up? Uh, to your point, buyer beware at some point. You know, we can't protect everyone this thing. So I'm still kind of interested in something that somebody brought up, which was, so you have one piece of property, you can put in not a road, but a driveway, because it doesn't go to multiple houses and it can go all over the place. Then you can subdivide, and you have effectively a road going to every property, but it's already done. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all theoretical. Yeah, they're all I mean, I've never heard of any of these coming up. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 you're absolutely right. Two more. <laughs> like, um, 
I mean, one of the issues that makes it difficult to subdivide land is when the subdivision regulations require mapping of wetlands. Um, I don't see any requirement in the application that that an applicant would be required to do that. Mm -hmm. Even though there's, well, the state has independent regulations, but if they're, I mean, if somebody submits an application, there's no requirement that they be delineated. Not, not enough. It's so. like just three oh. things that on page six, just the three requirements. Yeah. Right. Critical wildlife, water quality. That's and, uh, <clears throat> um, I guess water quality, you know, what, how, how would we know if they didn't? Yeah. Yeah. And how would we know if they didn't mm -hmm. without hiring an engineer of our own? Mm -hmm. Or it's requiring that they have it, you know, it would be embedded in the regulation that they would have it re reviewed by an ecologist or qualified professional. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what happens, I think, in Act 250 is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they get the money in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then in terms of approving roads, are there, do we have standards? I mean, width or travel way or? Not in the definition today. Not in here. But in, in town, in town ordinance. Yeah, this is, this is mainly discussing driveways. Uh, but you get a road permit from the select exactly. board. Exactly, and that, I believe the, the, believe the road is road permit. Curb cuts. Curb cuts. Yeah, yeah. curb cuts. Yeah. 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 You don't look at the width of the road or even no. the no. access to no. emergency vehicles. Who does? That's so good. That's all of you. What's, 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 what I have to work with, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I think just as a, you know, a board member that might look at applications, if we have to evaluate um, Plan. The same red. Just <laughs> <laughs> out. My wife says you gotta change that red. So, <laughs> so trial. Don't lose chance. Go ahead, John. Uh, no, I mean I just. Um, <coughs> you, you know, if we're supposed to evaluate these things, we need. It's helpful to have some standards to say. Uh, okay, your road is, you know, if there's three houses that are going to access this road, the traveled way has to be so wide, the sub base needs to be so deep, you know, I, I mean. Mm -hmm. um, Gosh, we, uh, we review applications for uh, people off uh, town roads, off class four roads. You know, and, and all we say is you got to keep it open so a, a fire truck, mm -hmm. so the ambulance can come. Mm -hmm. People say, "Well, we don't care about that." Right. But, you know, but it's they may not own it forever. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, uh, they, don't, no, they don't care until they need the ambulance. Yeah. And, and also that would help us because what happens is everyone end up coming back to us and hey, can you put you know loads of this down? Or you know, we need gravel. We need a new culvert. Um, and it eventually falls back on us. And we, so those are the type of things that we always have said in the past, you know, well, we, should, we should make John put restriction on this. If they're gonna build a house, they need to maintain, you know. Uh, we do that class four. Well, I mean, we have sort I think of- recently, I think we sort of done that. Yeah, we don't, yeah. Like um, you gotta maintain it. Um, and the town's not accepting responsibility. Haven't we included that kind of language? I, I mean, I think we made general statements that you have to build a road that that a fire truck or emergency vehicles can access all seats. But these guys put standards on what that size road needs to be, and, and such it would be a lot easier. I think it would be if, it, if there's going to be seven houses right. using a road, it needs to be a little wider than if there's two, uh, or things like that. It would be helpful. Right, and that's one of the reasons that Wide we, enough for we learned that subdivision regulations can really integrate. They can take that road reg, reinforce mm -hmm. it in one place when, where it comes up in a context. So it seems like a good, a good tool to reinforce mm -hmm. from a couple different directions in one place. Wide enough for two UPS trucks <laughs> traveling in opposite <laughs> 50 miles. There's an yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it does seem that once you're very specific, there are more and more failure modes you can find. <laughs> Perfection is the enemy of the good. <laughs> so, JB, when you put a, uh, when a regulation is put down, like on, uh, if someone wants to develop on a glass world, does anybody go and check it out after it's all done, that it's actually done? Is there an enforcement part of this? Or we just make rules mm. and hope that everybody's going to comply. Well, I, I I have also drafted a certificate uh, of occupancy. So the answer, the short answer is no. Without without this town issuing uh, certificates of occupancy, there is no follow up mechanism unless I took it upon myself to go out there and, and make sure it was done according to plan. Or somebody, um, or but, somebody complains. Or somebody complains, but with, with a CO, you have uh, somebody attesting to the fact that it was built according to plans. And usually before I would issue a CO, I go out to visit a, a property unless it's, you know. Don't go listed, I mean, they do building permits, and then don't they go out and just check to be sure that they do. the building mm -hmm. is built to the... No, I mean, no, they're, no, just, no, they're doing no, it for no. valuation purposes. They'll go out and, and it hasn't happened in, 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 in more town, but um, it's been my experience elsewhere that the listers are usually on it and would tell me if something's not in the mist, but... In, Again, that's the advantage of having a certificate of occupancy is you have that follow-up enforcement mechanism. But even with a certificate of occupancy, after a year or two, if they don't maintain the road, mm -hmm. then it's sure. back to the way it was. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I just think that we have a lot of regulations that nobody enforces, so we can we can make all the regulations we want, mm -hmm. but if nobody enforces them, mm -hmm. why? I bother. it. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just agreeing with Greg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we've had, uh, John, John, do you have any more? So we've had, I think we've had a good discussion here. Uh, I would still like to see you guys um, take a look through what's being proposed. I know the zoning has, but um, do you have been, are there any more uh, instances where you see where language could be improved or there's, you know, a little cloudiness in the, in the explanations, if you could get that uh, backed up. Oh, thank you, it's cloudy tonight. So, and what, what troubles me is, I mean, we've got what, we've got 15 people in this room right now <clears throat> who have probably looked at this more than anybody else in town. And when this thing goes to a vote in March or whenever, you know, you're expecting, well, let the voters decide. The voters aren't deciding, they just vote yes. And not one of them can answer any of the questions that were posed tonight. We can't even answer half the questions that were proposed tonight. So I just find this whole thing, it's kind of like we're doing this as a field you know, of problem. I thought this, this is an excellent discussion. Process. We're starting someplace. We're starting someplace. The DRB is going to have an experience with this. You're going to have an experience with this. And it will be changed. And it will be tweaked. And it will get better. So, so make sure I'm understanding the process. You're going to have DRB look at it, provide comments to the, the Planning Commission right. and the Select Board of what uh, suggested either revisions to this or their position on whether it's even even needed or warranted. Is that they can, they can, uh, whatever that, they want. If they want their opinion on whether they, mm -hmm. you know, they can send that as well. But I just like to see more what they, what they feel of the document itself okay. on how that could be approved, uh, improved or not. We've had, I have a pretty good idea what people are feeling. Uh, I mean, I think people want to do the best for the town. They don't want to impose unnecessary requirements or costs, um, but we need to balance that with, you know, a healthy environment going forward. And so with what you guys put together, for, and you've done a great job, I know you put a ton of work into it, but if you can add what they come up with and then we as a board I think can make a decision you know present this to the town or not and uh, I think um, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I'm no I, I just uh, I think it you know it's not really the development review board's place to uh, or at least the way I view it for myself uh, to say whether or not this is something that should be put in place I'd say it's that's what the planning commission but, uh, that does. Right, that's why I said on a second note you could yeah, give us yeah, your opinion on that. Or, or, or not, you don't have to. Whatever, yeah. whatever comments you want to provide. But more of looking at the substance of the yeah. document, what works, what doesn't work, yeah. and then we can make that decision. But I, I really appreciate 
getting your input, your expertise on it. I think there, your point of view on this is the most important part of this because like a lot of the laws that we get, they're created by people who have no clue what the hell they're making laws about. They're just making laws. That's what we do. And you guys, and you guys know what works and what doesn't work, at least for you and your experience. And I'm very interested to hear about that because to me, it's like, I don't know what this is and I feel very uncomfortable saying, all right, we're going to have this ordinance. And then we we'll see what happens. You know? but, let me put it another way: whatever input you want to provide, us, we will look at. Well, How do you want to do it? You know, thinking about this, it's hard to go beyond what we said tonight. But you know, something that that lays out specific standards and just doesn't talk about generalities to give us both the applicant and then the reviewing board guidance as to what they have to do to get approval. You know, what's fair and reasonable, and um, that's really helpful as opposed to just, you know, generalities that you should consider mm -hmm. landscaping and screening. Uh, and uh, one other thing that I was thinking about as we've been talking about roads is in terms of stormwater management. And mm -hmm. roads become very, very important. So uh, we should pay attention to that. We just got a grant to work on Lynch Hill do some work on that. And the main reason that we chose that for the grant is because stormwater was affecting a class three road. So we were able to get money to work on a class four road because it mm -hmm. helped the class three road. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind too. Um, related to that, what about clearing on slopes? Um, is there anything we need to do to address that? Did you mean development on over? 30% grade or something like that. I don't know what the appropriate grade would be, but anywhere that it would cause erosion mm -hmm. or... Yes, or we have so, as per my memo, one of the more so important things I find in these subdivision mm -hmm. regulations is the reference uh, in the regulations to section 4.15, which, which was recently adopted a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, and, and slid into the regulations and that addresses the stormwater management and development on steep slopes. Uh, as mm -hmm. far as clearing on slopes, I mean, you know, clearing yeah. in and of itself is not development, but uh, yeah, it's very hairy. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that so that is by reference in there. And right now, uh, run of the mill zoning permit. You know, I, I can't use section four point one five. I mean, I can provide you know comments and saying use silt fencing and that, but it's not necessarily binding. Whereas section four point one five is applicable for conditional use review, and if these were to be adopted, it would it would be ref it would. Be included in part of the subdivision. What about clearing without subdividing? There's no. There's no. no yeah, I mean, there's there's just, yeah, just checking with the forces. There's, there's, there's a lot of towns asking that question. Yeah. Especially mm -hmm. as we've been studying right. stormwater and, mm -hmm. and we've been studying um, just well, also land cover, like um, mm -hmm. you know, the change over time, because there's been a lot of incremental clearing, you know, mm -hmm. that you do. Mm -hmm. Um, and it adds yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Because Darren and I both sit on a uh, task committee uh, with uh, Friends of the Mad River, and it's an amazing how much deforestation has occurred in, over the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you again. So if you guys, John, uh, Eric, your board, uh, Dave, um, everyone can get their comments in uh, over the next couple of weeks uh, or changes that would be helpful. Would it be helpful to have a, a, a date? I know for me, oh, dead, deadlines. deadlines. <laughs> 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 to to uh, give me the task. A couple weeks in September. Yeah, why don't we do um, what's the, uh, October 1st deadline? For us to get it back to No, no, no. Yeah. For the comments to get to you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, they came in today's mail. <laughs> yeah, that gives them a couple of weeks. Gives us a couple of weeks. Because we have questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does, yeah. That, yeah. does that yeah. work for everyone? In general. What was um, that? October 1? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, the first one. The first one. That would tie yeah. in. October 1. Yeah. Yeah. All those things I mentioned in general. Yes. You know, incorporating and they'll, they'll show part of the zoning so. regulation. Right. I would also be interested in that. So. All right. So if there aren't any other further questions, concerns, clarity. thank you very much. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it. Thank you. 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 Thank